class that had come to us. The little 13-year-old girl, or 13-month-old girl, Sophie, that has the flu. Touch that baby. Touch that child. Lord, that baby can't pray the prayer of faith, but we pray the prayer of faith for that little baby, 13 months old. Heal that baby. We bind the flu, not only for that baby, but for all those. Pneumonia, bronchitis, sore throats, the flu. We break that in the name of Jesus, God. Touch them and set them free, Lord, by your Holy Spirit. We're going to thank you. We're going to praise you and magnify your name for hearing and answering prayer. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Goodbye, world. Goodbye, indeed. Let's clap our hands for the Lord, shall we? Come on, clap your hands. Yeah. this song. Oh, yes. Goodbye, world. Goodbye. I told all my troubles goodbye. Goodbye to each cheer and each sigh. This world which I roam cannot be my home. I'm bound for that city in the sky. I walk and I talk with my Lord. I feast every day on His word. Heaven is near. I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Cause I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet sound, my feet will stay on the ground. I'm gonna rise at the shadow, I'm gonna fly. Gonna meet my Lord in the sky. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. I won't have the blues anymore. When I go across to the shore, and I'll never pine, for I'll leave behind my heartaches and cares forevermore. A day may be two, goodbye, goodbye to each tear and each sigh. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone, cause I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet sound, my feet won't stay on the ground. I'm gonna rise at the shout, I'm gonna fly. Woo! Gonna meet my Lord in the sky. Heaven is near, I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye, goodbye. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Yeah! Oh, glory. The old country boy said, if that don't start you far, your wood's wet. Amen. Glory to God. I want my good friend, Brother Tim York, to sing a song and obey the Lord this morning. He's, he's full of the Holy Ghost. He loves the Lord. Circuit riding preacher. Glory to God. And he's part Cherokee. And he's on the war path against the devil. Amen. Amen. Is that right, brother? Hallelujah. Come on up here. I love you, Glory. I met him via Facebook. And if you want to be friends with me on Facebook, re make a request. I don't allow no nudity. No naked women. No uh, family feuds. Hello? Testing, one, two. Can you hear me now? And it amazes me. People put their family business on Facebook, and you'll make a comment, and they'll say, it's none of your business. Well, why'd you put it on the social media so everybody can see it for then? Amen. But uh, anyway, uh, no arguing over doctrine. Amen. Be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Amen. But anyway, we're glad to have you today. He came bearing gifts this morning, gave Sister Martin and I a gift. We've already gotten an argument whose room it's going to go in. It's a plaque. 
I said, I told one of the team, I said, we'll have to set, saw that thing in two, have her take part of it, me take part of it. Because she wanted it and I wanted it. But it's in our house, so I should be happy, right? Amen. <laughs> these these brothers can play with you, whatever you want to do. They, they'll make you sound better than what you really are. These Amen. musicians. They do me anyway. Amen. Let's give Reverend Tim York a God bless you, shall we? Come on, brother. Can I use my book up there? Good morning. This is a day the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. I definitely love praising the Lord, love being filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. You know, some people say, well, what's the fire? I said, that's God's Holy Ghost. He invigorates you with fire like Brother Jeremiah had when he got down and warmed up his bones. It warms me up from head to toe and right down to my little fingertips. Hallelujah. Praise the name. I tell you, I appreciate being here. Love each and every one of you with God's love. I'm going to start out with the Lord's Prayer, and this doesn't even require any backup. But Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I love the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. You know, I like these noisy churches. I like the ones where the Holy Ghost gets in you. I like to hear a little shout and little hand raising, you know, little dancing in, in the Holy Ghost like Brother David did, you know, when they was carrying that ark around and he was dancing out there. I tell you what, I get excited when I come into the house of God. It's a place to praise the Lord. It's a place to give honor. Hallelujah. Oh, I can see this morning, I can see the joy in some of those faces out there this morning. I'll tell you, smile for Jesus. You can't smile for nobody better. Since I'm a circuit riding preacher, I figured I'd, I'd play the, uh, the circuit riding preacher song. This switches around, so it starts out kind of like uh, to the battle hymn of the Republic and then switches to different verses from different songs. The circuit riding preacher used to ride across the land with a rifle and his saddle and a Bible in his hand. He told the prairie people all about the promised land as he went riding, singing down the trail. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all the harms. The everlasting arms The circuit riding preacher Traveled to the mire and mud Told about the fiery furnace And of Noah and the flood He preached the way to heaven Was by water and the blood As he went riding, singing 
down the trail. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. The circuit riding preacher slept in flea infested barns. Even then, he felt the comfort of the everlasting arms that gave him strength to travel on to churches, homes, and farms as he went riding, singing down the trail. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, oh, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me, oh. The circuit riding preacher preached from off the stones of grace. He opened in the smoky rooms and bad infested caves. And through the places changed. The word was always Jesus saves when he went riding, singing down the trail. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around that Jesus saves. Oh, bear the news in every land and climb the steeps across the ways. Onward tis our Lord's command. There's a meeting up in heaven with the circuit riders there, all rejoicing in their missions they fulfilled most everywhere. And now they're looking out for all the living circuit riders here as they go riding, singing down the trail. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Our God is marching on. How about some Holy Ghost and fire? Well, it's that Holy Ghost and fire. It's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Well, it's that Holy Ghost and fire. It's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping me alive. Well, it sets my feet to dancing. It's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Well, it sets my feet to dancing. It's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping me alive. Well, it makes me want to shout. And it's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Well, it makes me want to shout. And it's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping me alive. Well, it's down here in my heart. And it's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Well, it's down here in my heart. And it's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping me alive. Well, it makes me want to dance. And it's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. And it makes me want to dance. And it's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping me alive. And it makes you want to praise. It's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. Oh, yes, keeping me alive. And it makes me want to praise. It's keeping me alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping me alive. And it makes you want to sing. It's keeping you alive. Oh, yes, keeping you alive. Oh, yes, keeping you alive. And it makes you want to sing. And it's keeping you alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping you alive. Well, it's that Holy Ghost and fire is keeping you alive. Oh, yes, keeping you alive. Oh, yes, keeping you alive. Well, it's that Holy Ghost and fire is keeping you alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping you alive. Oh, it's that Holy Ghost and fire is keeping you alive. Oh, yes, keeping you alive. Oh, yes, keeping you alive. Oh, yes, keeping you alive. It's that Holy Ghost and fire is keeping you alive. Oh, yes, Jesus is keeping you alive. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah, brother. 
71. 71. You're going to keep on, you catch up with me. I'm 77. Amen. Let's give her ever to him. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, my brother. Hallelujah. You see, that's what Facebook can do. Good relationship, amen, on Facebook. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that, that he is my friend. I think God just bonded us together through Facebook. And when he heard me preach on live stream, he said, you preach just like I believe. Woo, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't God so good? Oh, yes, he is. Well, you won't leave here like you came. Jesus' name. Found the prince for me there, Sigour Lane. God's anointed me to preach and teach. He confirms his word constantly. Signs and wonders follow. Be 
Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Do you know him today? Please don't turn him away. Oh, Jesus. Tell you what to do. Here's what you gotta do. Just call on my King Jesus. Your healing's coming through, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. Do you know it? Do you know it? Do you know it? When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you know what he'll do? He'll come walking right by your way. Well, if you need a miracle, let me tell you what to do. Call on my Jesus, your miracles coming through, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you'll come walking by my way. Sing the song, King Jesus. I know you hear me when I pray every day. Yes, Lord. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you come a walking by my way. Well, I've been in the valley that reach that mountain top. I'm looking for that city, good God, I can stop. King Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you come a walking by my way. King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. Do you know it? King Jesus, I know you hear me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, you come a walking by my way. Some men, they want silver. Some men, they want gold. But give me Jesus. He's the rock of my soul. King Jesus. I know. 
know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, he'll come a walking by my way. King Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. King Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, he'll come a walking by my way. Glad day, brethren! Praise him on the drums! Come on, praise him on those drums! Come on, Bridget, bring it on. They threw a pole in prison. Talk about the midnight hour. He began to call on Jesus. The Lord had heard his prayer. King Jesus. I know he hears me when I pray. If I'm down here in prison, you come walking by my way. King Jesus. I know he hears me when I pray. King Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, if I'm a walking by my way. Listen, listen now. They were in the upper chamber, 120 in all. They began to call on Jesus and the Holy Ghost in fall. King Jesus. I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, he'll come a walking by my way. King Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. King Jesus, I know he hears me when I pray. When I'm down here in trouble, Lord, I'm walking by my way. And I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. My father is rich, houses and land. I'm in there. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a multi, multi, multi million. How many millionaires we got here today? I'm a child of the key. A child of the key. Hey! My father is rich, houses and land. He owns everything. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. How could you work, Brother Mark? I'm a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Yes, Lord. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm a happy, happy, happy millionaire. I'm a millionaire. Yes, Lord. I'm a millionaire. Like we got a lot of millionaires here today. I pulled that happy, happy out on my band and they, I kind of left them hanging. We got it. How many happy Christians do we have here today? You know, I wouldn't give you a dime a dozen for Christians that look like Grandma died and left them out of the wheel. They look sad, bad, and mad. Look like they've been baptized in lemon juice. At Walmart and the uh, the supermarkets, 
Kroger's and them, they had a sale on lemons. They went and bought everyone. They get to suck them on it all day long. Serving the Lord, you ought to be happy. But you don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what Jesus went through, so you could be happy. He died on the cross for you. You can be seated. Give my musician to God bless you this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I'll tell you, I love, I was born in that kind of music. Amen. One leading journalist said that they need to take the B3, Hammond B3, out of the church, I say pig whistles. Amen. We cut our teeth on this type of music. Amen. And we're going to continue it because that's what the Lord wants us to do. Amen. Before you leave, can you give me some funeral? Oh, he's going to cut it off. I was going to let him get a little funeral music. But we don't do that around here. I just, amen, glory to God. The Bible says praise him with a loud noise. Praise him, praise him with a ten-string instrument. Clap your hands, all you people. It didn't say clap your hands, all you Pentecostals. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A man said recently that I was demon-possessed. Watched me on Facebook and said I was demon-possessed. <laughs> well, we just pray for him, won't we? <laughs> Amen. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You can't tell it. Let me tell it what he's done for me. And if he did for you what he already done for me, you'd shout and praise him too. Can I get a witness in this house? Well, today is Super Bowl Sunday, but I've declared this Super Anointed Eagle Sunday. The Eagle Anointing is here today. Amen. I saw on the news where they're charging five and a half million dollars for a 30-second spot on the Super Bowl this evening. Five and a half million dollars for one 30-second spot. And I have never asked for a million dollars, but if a preacher did ask for a million dollars, they would crucify him. He's after money. Well, I'm here to after your money. I'm going to get all I can for the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't get too quiet on me. How many have your syllabus that I'm teaching on today? You got it in your hand? We're going to do a preach, teach. And uh, we're preaching part three of breaking generational curses. This is the third consecutive Sunday. And I'm going to give you a heads up right now. We won't cover it today either. So next Sunday will be part four of breaking family and generational curses. You remember last week I read to you the questionnaires that when you go to the doctor, they want to know your health history, how your father died, your mother died, your siblings, and so forth. Uh, if they had a stroke or high blood pressure, sugar diabetes, because they know that's heredity, and that can be passed down for generations. They know that. Doc doctors got more sense than what some Christians have. Christians don't believe that. But doc it's a medical fact. It's a medical fact. If your father had sugar diabetes, there's a possibility that you'll have sugar diabetes, and you all probably will. And heart failure, my father died when he was 46 years old of a heart attack. 46 years old. I think I'm the oldest Martin that's got past 70, and I'm 77. I'm believing God for 120. Hallelujah. Well, you're just dreaming. Well, don't wake me up. I'm having a good dream. Man. Now, in Genesis, the ninth chapter, verse 1 says, in Genesis, if you can't find the book of Genesis and you need more help, what I can give you. That's the first book in the Bible. You should be able to find the first book and the last book, which is Revelation. So if you, if you can't find Genesis, I, I can't help you. But the Bible said in verse 1 that God blessed Noah. Everybody say, God blessed Noah. And his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. So Noah and his sons did what God told him to do. God had blessed him. And then let's drop over here to verse 20. And Noah planted a vineyard. Everybody say he planted a vineyard. Verse 20, 
1 says, And he drank of the wine and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. I want you to notice that. He plants a vineyard. Noah plants a vineyard. And from that vineyard, he took the wine and the grapes, and he got drunk. Somebody say he got drunk. Here is the curse that came upon Noah and his family because he got drunk. We're going to see that in just a moment. And what I'm preaching and teaching on is breaking family curses. There are those today that they're an alcoholic because their daddy was an alcoholic. There are women today that are alcoholics because their mother was an alcoholic. It runs in the family until somebody has got a revelation to stop that in your family tree. So we see he got drunk. Verse 22, And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and he told his two brethren. And what they did, they took a covering in verse 23, and they backed over his body not looking at his nakedness in his body. They backed over his body so they would not look on his nakedness. Now, this was where the curse came in, in Genesis 9 and 25. Canaan, uh, Ham, I should say, means black. Can I say that again? Ham, H-A-M, means black. Cana means white. And I've heard that stupid argument. This is where God put a curse on the black race. God doesn't curse races. He curses sin. And he doesn't save you by the color of your skin, but he will save you and deliver you from a life of sin. Let me, let me explain this to you. <laughs> if you've got your syllabus, you can follow me. He... Uh, Canaan means white, and God said, Cursed be Cain. God did not curse color. God cursed sin. Everybody say, God cursed sin. Now, the Bible says that Noah got drunk. When a person gets drunk, their will is broken. You don't have no will when you get drunk. Noah was uncovered. Now listen to this carefully. Uncovered in the Hebrew indicates that there was a homosexual act when he was uncovered. Talking about family curses and breaking family curses. Somebody tell me why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. The sin of homosexuality. The sin of lesbianism. And this is a curse. Hello, somebody. I don't care what movie star marries another female movie star. It's an abomination in the sight of God. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but maybe I just will right now. <clears throat> no, I'm going to hold that. I'm gonna, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll. Have we got time? All right. Some of those sins of the Canaanites, it involved all types of sin. Fornicating, homosexuality, lesbianism, beast allergy, uh, sex before idols. And I believe, personally, this could be well called the sex age. Because everything that's sold, even on television, they got a beautiful woman up there, a model, showing that car. This is the brand new car. She's, man, she's slim and she's trim and she looks good. And these hillbillies go down there and buy the car, but they come to find out the woman don't come with it. But our automobiles are not sold on their durability. They're sold as sex symbols and sex idols. I wish I could get one amen in this house. We're living in that age now where there's sin everywhere that you look. Hosea 4 and 6, God says, My people, whose people? His people are destroyed for the lack of 
Not understanding God's word will put you in bondage. But understanding the word of God will get you out of bondage. I'm preaching on breaking family curses. Now, Noah was drunk. Got drunk. And you know the Bible says that wine is a mocker. And when the devil gets you drunk, he'll mock you. He'll laugh at you. He showed Elvis Presley the lights when he was singing in that little Assembly of God church years ago. He sees name and lights and what a big star. And he was. That song that I sang earlier, Without Him, was written by Milan Lefebvre when he was 16 years old. And Elvis recorded that song for him, and it went to the number one. Royalty started coming into Milan Lefebvre. He started getting attention that he never had attention before. He had money that he never had before. He began to splurge it, and they introduced him to drugs and to alcohol. They glorify drugs and alcohol. Is anybody in the house today? Amen. So be not among the wine bibbers. Proverbs 23 and 30, 20 says, Be not among the wine bibbers, bibbers among riotous and eaters of the flesh. Don't be a don't spend your time partying with the world. You're going to have to learn to say no to the things of the devil. Amen. I said you're going to have to learn to say no to the things of the devil. So Noah got drunk. Drunkenness. And drunkards will not enter into the kingdom. If you die drunk, you'll stand before God as a drunkard. If you die high on drugs, you'll die and stand before the Lord as an abuser of drugs. And they that do such things cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But we've come to the place where nothing is sin anymore. Nothing is sin anymore. We're living in the age, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's a sex-crazed age. Popular men and women live in same-sex marriage. Uh, churches today, I want to mention the Baptist church. The Baptist church is not like it was 50 years ago. 50 years ago, they preached against sin. Hello. But now I've got articles where in the Baptist, I know there's different Baptists, like there's different Pentecostals, where they're ordaining homosexuals as pastors in Baptist churches. One church got a lesbian couple as their youth leaders. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, out of the Knoxville New Sentinel Southern Baptist Convention adds lawsuit accusing prominent leaders of sex abuse. It's touched every denomination on the face of this earth. Amen. And uh, this week, my source is the Knoxville New Sentinel. February the 1st, 2018, the Pope, Pope Francis, sends sex crime experts to Chile to investigate bishops. The Vatican City, after coming under excruciating public criticism, Pope Francis has decided to send the Vatican's most respected crime experts to Chile to investigate. Wow. Don't you know those parents are relieved that they're sending those ex experts in sex from the Catholic Church? That's like having the fox to watch the hen house. He's there with a grin. In the Catholic Church, they got so many complaints on the priest that Pope Francis sent the crime sexual experts to Chile to sort it out. And you know what they'll do when they get there? They'll take that pedophiling priest and send him to another parish somewhere just so he can do the same thing over again. I'm, I'm talking about breaking family curses. I'm not preaching against one or any denomination. But I'm telling you, churches are not doing today what they did 50 years ago. Amen. In the last day, the Scripture said they would depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. and do That's a doctrine of the devil. Amen. 
and the Catholic Church has spent millions of dollars in settlements and lawsuits. These priests and the nuns molesting boys and girls. Is anybody in fact about it? We're we're you know we're not to pray to dead saints. Somebody said, Well, you pray to Jesus. I said, Yeah, but he ain't dead. He's alive. He's alive. And he's alive forevermore. And the Bible says in uh, Corinthians that we are lively stones, not tombstones, not dead stones. We're lively stones, read and known by all men. I'm alive and my God's alive. Ecclesiastes 9 and verse 5 says, The dead, the dead, the dead knoweth nothing. Shame on you here in the southeast going to the graveyards and decorating graves and talking to your great dead grandma. She's not there. You just want to go out and talk to a pine tree for all the good it's doing. They're not there. If they're safe to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. If you're going to talk to them, look heavenward. Don't look down. Breaking family curses. Uh Larry Nance, the gymnast coach, over 150 women has accused that man of sexually abusing them, and he is guilty as guilty can be. Don't try to don't try to vouch for him because you wasn't there. And all these young girls, their lives, many of them, will be destroyed because of him abusing them. Somebody say amen. You may get by for a little while. Preacher, you may get by for a little while. Deacons, you may get by for a little while. Elders, you may get by for a little while. But the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. One day God's going to jerk the cover off and everybody will see your sins. Oh, I come for you to pray for. I'm going to pray for you. I want you to call me out. I'm going to call you in first. You don't hear a preacher like this on television or anywhere, to my knowledge. Somebody say, yes, Lord. So we see that the Baptists have failed. The Catholic Church has failed. Any time a Christian or especially in leadership has a moral failure, it affects the whole body of Christ. I shared with you my brother-in-law uh, when he was 12 years old. He wasn't my brother-in-law when he was 12 years old, but he was in the Catholic Church. And a priest tried to molest him, and he climbed up a tree to get away from him. And the priest priest told him to come down he wouldn't come down and my brother on 12 year cursed him called him everything but a priest and when the priest went to get a ladder to get the tree to bring him down my brother-in-law ran and got away at the age of 12 and he said these words he told me personally he said there is no God and my brother-in-law died as an atheist I tried to witness to him he would not listen to me. Even when his parents died at the Catholic Church, he wouldn't even attend their funeral, his own parents. And when I buried him here in Lenore City, Tennessee, there's three people there, two funeral home workers and Woody Martin. Not one person, not even his children, showed up for his burial. Not even living children because he treated them like dirt. His, his son said, I'm glad that he's dead because he put those children through hell all because a priest tried to molest him and it turned him against God. Be sure your sin will find you out. You may cover it up for a while, but God got a hunting dog called trouble and he knows how to sniff out your sin.
He knows how to sniff out your wickedness. That's the reason we got to be faithful unto God. We got to be faithful unto the end, saith the Lord. Now, all this started, what I'm saying now, when Noah got drunk. Noah planted the vineyard, and from his own vineyard, he drank wine. I noticed on the news, I didn't get all of it, just caught up a little bit of it. Uh, I don't know if it's a doctor survey, but in essence it said, they say it. Well, who is they? Who is they say? Who, they say. You, you question, who's they? Well, I don't know, they, them. Who is they? I don't know, it's they, them. Who that? I don't know who. But they, quoting, they say that drinking a little wine helps your brain. Well, they may, they may have something. It may get pickled. Your brain may get pickled. I am a teetotaler. I don't believe drinking a few beers or one beer or no beer. No wine. I told you about the blind lady that received her sight in this church. And Peggy and I were in a restaurant, and she, she left the church because she got mad at something I said, and I find that hard to believe. But, uh, but she was in a restaurant, a nice restaurant, and Peggy and I uh, was in there. We was going to order, and I walked by the table. When I walked by the table, she was looking through that eye that God healed, reading the menu, sipping on a glass of wine, showing God her appreciation for opening her blinded eye, sipping on wine and drinking. I thought, I hope to God you don't go blind again. You'll be reading that menu in Braille. It amazes me, and I know it's scriptural. It amazes me that people that get genuine miracles from the Lord, they walk and turn away from God. And Lord showed me one day, he said there was ten lepers, but only one returned and say, Thank you, Lord, thank you, thank you that I'm healed of my leprosy. So if we can get one out of ten, I guess we're on par. Is anybody here? Man, so Noah got drunk. Everybody say he got drunk. In verse 25, and he said, Cursed be Canaan, that's the white, a servant of servants, shall he be unto his brethren. And I already explained Canaan means white. God did not put a curse on the black man. God did not put a curse on the white man. God put a curse on those that sin. That's where the curse is. But Preacher Martin, I'm teaching you how to get out from under the curse. Does, does anybody remember what I preached on last week? The first person that was ever healed according to the, the Bible? The first healing according to the Scriptures in the Bible was barrenness. A woman that could not have a child in Bible days was considered there was a curse on her. Does that, does that sound familiar now? And in the 20th chapter of Genesis, the Bible says that Abraham, let's turn over right quickly. We're close there. The Bible says in Genesis, the, uh, 20, yeah, the 20th chapter, verse 17, I'm talking about get, getting out from under the curse. And I'm going to tell you right now, sickness is a curse. Poverty is a curse. Blindness is a curse. Sugar diabetes is a curse. Heart trouble is a curse. And those curses will stay in your family until someone takes authority over them and breaks them in the name of Jesus. I know this is not a popular message. But Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will. Somebody say, thank God for the truth. Thank God for the truth. 
I'm not in a popularity contest. I'm going to tell you the truth. Now, Abimelech wanted Abraham's wife. He lusted after her. Lust is one of the works of the flesh. And they that obey the works of the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care how much you lust. Did you know that there's, I forget the percentage, about 59, almost 60% of preachers that watch pornography? Testing one, two. Can you hear me now? Watching pornography, pictures of naked men and women. You know what David said? He said, I will set no evil thing before my eyes. I'm not going to set no evil thing before my eyes. Shame on you. You know what you need? You need the devil cast out of you is what you need. Sure is quiet in here. Abimelech wanted Abraham's wife. And the Bible says, let's read it. I could quote it. Verse 17 of Genesis 20. Genesis 20 and verse 17. So Abraham prayed unto God. Everybody say, Abraham prayed. If you're the seed of Abraham, you need to learn how to pray. Quit depending on Woody Martin to pray for you. Pray for yourself. And I believe in the prayer of agreement. That phone rings all day long and 24 hours a day here in our office. People need prayer. And 95% of them need money. Which tells me another thing. They're probably a God robber. Because the Jesus, God said in Malachi 3 and 10, He said, will a man God? And He answered the question Himself. Will a man rob God? He answered the question Himself. How does a man rob God? Does he go to heaven and jerk one of the pearly gates off? Does he get a jackhammer and jackhammer the gold out of the streets of gold? Jesus, God answered his own question. He said, you robbed me with money, tithe, and your offering. And he said in the same verse, in the same breath, he said, you are cursed with a curse because you don't pay your tithe or give your tithe and your offering. Please don't stone me now. I'm just saying what the book says. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at God. You're going to get. I said, you're a God robber. And God says, you're cursed with a curse. Why? Because he said, you've robbed me. Lord, how do we do this? He said, in tithe. He didn't say in tithe and tithe. He says, tithe and offering. There's a difference. Your tithe comes first. Your tithe doesn't go to TBN. Or to a TV, I'm a TV preacher. Your tithe belongs in a local church, a local storehouse. And then if God blesses you, you can give an offering over and above your tithe. Getting quieter all the time. Well, Pastor, I just can't get ahead. I wonder which prophet you have defied or talked about. Because the Bible said if you obey his prophet, you would prosper. It makes me wonder. One lady, four months behind leaving this church one time, four months behind on her bills, and, uh, car payment and rent, and, and just living hand to mouth. And I said, is there any way we can help you? Oh, God's got it under control. I said, he's not doing a very good job of it then. If you're about to lose your home, about to lose your car, and you can't eat, test him one, two. Now can you hear me? My mother sent me to the grocery store. She got a check for $80 every month. A single widow mother raising three children. I'd go to the grocery store and cash that $80 check and come back home and she'd take $8 and put it aside. She said, that's my tithe. A widow. I said, Mom, the church don't need that. She said, they may not need it, son, but we need the blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I put on Facebook this week, Woody and Peggy Martin will not apologize for their harvest because we're 20% tithers. Not, let alone the cars that we've given away to people. Four automobiles. Just give them to people. Gave them the tithe. You've got to find a need and fill it. 
Let me get back to Abraham here. Oh, I'm, I'm plowing deep this morning. Abraham prayed for Abimelech. Verse 17. He prayed for Abimelech and his wife, and he prayed for his maidservants. And all of a sudden, they started bearing children. Because, look at verse 18. For the Lord, who? For the Lord had fast closed. Who had fast closed? The Lord shut up the womb of Abimelech's wife and his maid servants. You know what he did? He got Abimelech out from under the curse of not bearing children. Not only did Abimelech's wife conceive, his maid servants. The curse was lifted off of his house. I'm telling you here this morning, when we pray for you after a while, we're going to lift the curse off of your house, and it's not going to come back again because we're going to break that thing in the name of Jesus. Thank you. It's all right to say, woo-woo, every now and then. I like that. Unless it's a, it's a Cherokee Indian on the front row here. It might be on the war path. bothers me. There's things that bother me as a minister. Things bother me. When I hear such statements, oh, we're all God's children. You ever hear that? No, we're not all God's children. You're not God's child if you're living in sin. You are a sinner. We're all God's children. I admit God loves everybody. But we're not all God's children. Jesus said, everybody say Jesus said. In St. John the 8th chapter and verse 44, He said to those religious people that day, they said we are of Abraham's seed. And He said if you're Abraham's seed, why don't you do what Abraham did? Why are you trying to kill me? St. John 8, 44, 45, 46, somewhere along there. And then Jesus turned to him and says, You are of your father the devil. You see, he didn't say, You're all God's children. Now he said, your, your daddy's the devil. So that knocks out in the head that we're all God. I'll, I'll get hate mail over this, but I've got hate mail before. You know, hate mail starts good fires. Yeah. I can put it in file 13. Folks, I've been doing this over 50 years, and I know what I'm doing. It's not a brag. It's not a brag. When I had a woman stand in this church and said every, every, every person in her family had cataracts, her, her two, three children, and her five or six grandchildren, and a six-year-old grandchild, every one of them had cataracts. Do you think that's a blessing? That it, that's a curse from the devil. That's not a blessing from God. And somebody is going to have to get the curse off of them. Oh, we're all God's children. We're all God's No, we're not. If Jesus said you are of your father the devil, I believe they were of the devil. people that get miracles they go back out into the world live like hell God says my spirit will not always strive with man oh help me Holy Ghost be very careful Careful. now I'm gonna is this the lady over here that has cancer Y'all that just came in. I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's take a praise break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. This, this is confirmation. Look at verse 18. Genesis 20, 20, Genesis 20 and verse 18. Abraham prayed and lifted the curse of barrenness off of Abimelech. Verse 18. For the Lord had fast and closed up all the womb of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. You're not supposed to lust after another man's wife or husband if you're a woman. That's the works of the flesh. Thank you, Lord. You get a picture of that, Tim. From left to right, real slow. Close up. Sharabotoribikoro. And God spoke to me last night about this service today to incorporate this in my preaching. Here's what he told me to do. To drape this thing over my body. And I said, Lord, hold this one. Just sit there, you can hold it. I said, Lord, how am I going to keep that around my shoulders? He said, get you a paper clip. modern stuff we got going here. A paper clip. I said, yes, Lord. I'm glad he talks to me. Amen. I may need a woman now to help me. I think I just need one. Facebook's saying right now, what in the world is he doing? straight now get a picture of this I, I, you know when I say get behind me Satan he's reading that word I've never done this before I know some people think I'm crazy and it's probably prove it in your mind Prophets do crazy things. I said prophets do odd things. I don't want to leave you under the curse. I'm going to take about ten more minutes and finish this part up, and I'm going to have to do it. This I may do this for several Sundays. You notice your syllabus? I didn't, I'm led by the Spirit. How many of you know that? I gave you the syllabus. I gave you the teaching. But i got to be led by the Spirit. And if God doesn't heal people today in this service, I'll lay my Bible down and never preach again. Because I know what He said to me. I know He hears me when I pray. King Jesus, when you're down here in trouble, He'll come walking right by your way. Would you, well, my paper clip gave up on me. Would you come and sit on the front row, please? The lady and the man. Hello, Teresa. He'll clip this for me where it'll stay. But I do have to take it off after a while. <laughs> I know you can do that. Y'all just sit on that front row if you would, please. 
got to do this the way God showed me. Thank you. Get behind me, Satan. See what you're up against back there? When, when the devil came to Jesus, Matthew 4 and 4, if you be the Son of God, Jesus said, man shall, not be, 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 man shall not live by bread alone, but every word, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. <laughs> January the 17th, just a few weeks ago, I left this church so discouraged. I was beaten down, but I didn't tell nobody about it. As soon as I hit the door at my house, my wife, look, I didn't say a word. She said, what's wrong? I said, don't want to talk about it. I went to my prayer room. And I prayed, and I prayed. And you know, when you're tired, your body's tired, I think it was President Reagan said he never made a major decision after 4 o'clock in the afternoon, one of our presidents. That's wisdom. If your body's tired, your mind is tired. And you'll make decisions the next day you regret sometimes. Some of you regret signing that brand new car when that first payment came back to you. I wish I had my old car back now. I'm in there praying. And God spoke to me because it seemed like my world was coming in. And here are the words that God spoke to me. And I never heard this term in my life, to my knowledge. And I'm not saying that it's original. God spoke to me and said these words I'm going to give you an eagle anointing and in my mind I'm questioning God and I said Lord what do you mean an eagle anointing he said what happens to the eagle when the storm comes I said Lord he, he got two sets of eyelids two shades one for regular flight and one for storms. He'll drop those eyelids down for, for the storm, and he hits that storm head on. And when he hits that storm head on, the wind, he had up above the storm. It's like hydroplaning on the highway, but he goes upward. And all of a sudden, the eagle is up here, and the storm, he's above his storm. And God says, son, you're going to get above this storm. I said, thank you, Jesus. I said, thank you, Jesus. And the next day, somebody gave me $3,000 for television. Which it was already en route while I was praying. Hey! I can't leave you hanging. So in the future, you will hear me refer as the eagle anointing because that's what God's placed upon me. You know, I, I don't drink wine. I preached on wine a while ago. They say wine gets better with age. Well, Woody Martin gets better with age. Amen. I said, I'm getting better with age. Let's, let me get back up here to the Bible. I'm going to pray for folks here in just a few moments. Now, in Numbers, just write some of these scriptures down. I do want you to turn to Deuteronomy, the 23rd chapter, because uh, for today's lesson, we're going to uh, lift the curse from you. We're going to lift the family curse from you. We're going to lift the curse of cancer from you. Lift the curse of sugar diabetes from you. Hallelujah. Why would God give me these revelational truths if he wasn't going to do it? Numbers 22 and 12. Balak offered, I'll go, I'll go to Deuteronomy in just a moment. I'm just going to quote this to you. But Numbers 22, if you're fast in your Bible, you can turn to Numbers 22 and verse 11. Balak offered Balaam money if he would curse the nation of Israel. Put a curse. Balak offered money. I firmly believe some of these preachers will tell you anything to get your money. And 
not tell you to live right. And I, I believe in a power of positive confession, but every preacher that preaches everything positive and you never have a negative. There's an electrician. If everything was positive to him in this church and there's no negative, what would happen? There wouldn't be no power. You have to have the, the positive as well as the negative. And beware of preachers that everything they preach is positive, 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 positive. You're going to have some valleys sometime. You're going to have some mountain experiences. You're going to have to get in a valley. But thank God you don't have to camp down in the valley because he's the lily of the valley and there's two mountains for every valley. So God wants you to be on the mountain twice more than you are in the valley. I'm not going to say that. I am going to say this. Balak offered Balaam money, Numbers 22, 12 if he would curse the nation of Israel. And here's, here's what Balaam said. You can't curse those who are blessed. How can I curse that which God has blessed? How can you curse that which God has blessed? But the devil has put a curse on you, but today we're going to reverse the curse in the name of Jesus. We're going to reverse that curse. I housed a man. I fed a man. I gave him money for over two weeks. Gave him car money. Fixed his old car up. Helped him. And after a couple of weeks, he got mad at me and called me a false prophet. And for two weeks, my wife and I, we, he'd, he'd call, You're coming down, Martin. I'm putting a curse on you. You're coming down, Martin. That's been 30 years. I ain't come down yet. Forgive me for saying I ain't. Not good grammar, but you know where I'm coming from. How can you curse that which God hath blessed? Can't do it. Can't do it. But in Deuteronomy 23 and verse 5, I want you to get this. If you don't get nothing else I've said today, Deuteronomy 23 and verse 5. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God would not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing. The Lord turned the curse into a blessing. Everybody say that. Got a nice ring, doesn't it? The Lord turned the curse into a blessing. When I went when I went back to the eagle anointing, God allowed several things to go wrong in my life in the ministry. Nothing personal between Peggy and I. We've got a strong marriage. I love that woman. I love her. I thank God for her. She is. She is my jewel. She's she's not only my wife, she's my best friend. So we didn't have, wasn't that? It's ministry related and people. You know what Paul's thorn in the flesh was? It was people. Jesus said, I received these wounds in the house of my friends. Church folks can be vicious with their tongue. God allowed these things to pile up, pile up. And you have never heard me in your lifetime getting this message preached when I was down. If I'm down, you'll not know it. Because before I take this pulpit, I pray in the Holy Ghost sometime for hours to get the mind of God. And the Lord says, and after all this build up, He's impressed me. I don't even have my current book. It'll go, probably go to the printers in March. But I want to do an, a book now on the eagle anointing. I said I want to write a book on the eagle's anointing. The most unique bird on the face of this earth it soars. And God says, Woody Martin, you're going to soar with the ministry that I placed upon you. That's the reason I've blessed you these 77 years, and you're in good health. You haven't completed what I called you to do yet. 
I said, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. I told you earlier, I'm pro I think I'm the only male Martin that has lived past 70 in our history of the Martin family. And I'm 77. I get around like I'm 16. And the Lord says that he would turn the curse, that which the devil meant for harm in your life, he's going to turn it around and make a blessing out of it. The spirit of poverty that's on some of you, God's going to reverse the curse, and you're not going to be in poverty. You're going to be blessed, blessed, blessed with spiritual blessings and money from on high. tired of people coming to this church. I can't pay my bills. I'm tired of that. And you ought to get tired. You ought to get so mad you'll start proving God would prove offerings. Malachi 3 and 10. He said, you robbed me in tithe and offering. And then he said, prove me. You give the tithe and the offering and prove me. If I'll not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there won't be room enough to receive it. I'm going to give you so much stuff you have to call your neighbors. Come over and get some of this stuff. Go over and get some of this furniture. Come over here and get some of this money I've got. Well, that'd be a switch. Would you loan me fifty dollars for Friday? Can you can you loan me a hundred dollars? Tell him, see, brother, I think you're already blind. Can you loan me fifty dollars to the first? I said, first of what? First time you catch me. Because when people borrow money, they get amnesia. I said, break. All this started when Noah got drunk. The curses started down through the lineage, inheriting down through the years. He got drunk. In my heart, I've witnessed the women in this church in days gone by and the physical abuse that man has beat, beat them. Let me tell you women something. God didn't call you to be a punching bag for no man. And if I were a woman and a man beat up on me, that would be twice, his first time and his last time. Because when he went to sleep, I'd go in the kitchen, I'd get that big old black skillet make cornbread in and I'd get both hands and I'd hit him across the head with it. Honey, if he had long hair, he'd be nappy-headed. I'm just serious. This woman was, Brother Tim, trying to get her husband to stop drinking. And he, was, he had whiskey in a glass. He was drinking it right there at the kitchen table. And he was an avid fisherman. And she knew he had his fishing gear out in the garage and she, he always had the can of worms so she went out in the garage and, and his fishing uh, uh, tackle my brother-in-law we used to uh, go to golf courses when I was up in Illinois Chicago we go to golf courses at night and get night callers those, some of those things are about eight or ten inches long we go fishing with them well here in East Tennessee they're only about six inches long but this this woman got three of those worms and she dropped it in her husband's whiskey that he's drinking. And all of a sudden, those worms floated to the top of that glass of whiskey, lifeless, dead. She said, you see, Charles, you see what happens to you if you drink whiskey? He said, yeah, it tells me if I drink whiskey, I won't have worms. Finally, I got some of you to move. Here's the clincher. I say this for last. Because God loves you, God loves me. Even though you're under curse, God loves you. The last four words 
that he said in verse 5. Deuteronomy 23 and verse 5. Nevertheless, the Lord thy God will not hearken unto Balaam, but the Lord thy God will turn the curse into a blessing. Why, Lord? Why would you do that, Lord? Why would you turn the curse into a blessing? Because the Lord thy God loves thee. How oh, glory, hallelujah. That's the reason he turned the curse into blessing, because he loved you. For God so loved the world that he gave. He's still giving today. I'm praying for sugar diabetes, but I'm praying for this lady first. Where'd y'all come from? Where'd you dri- did you drive? Where are you from? Indianapolis, Indiana. Indianapolis, Indiana. And you drove. How long have you been making biscuits for him? 46 years. 46 years. Sister Martin's got your feet. And in the vision, this is what I saw. Could you stand, please? What's your first name? Martha. Martha. Oh, I like that's a Bible name. Martha has chosen that good thing Jesus said. Mm. Give me just a touch of oil. Now I've got lapel. I've got lapel mics. I'm old fashioned. I like a handheld because I, when I get out here amongst the people, I've got to, I can't, I can't put this up. Would you talk into the microphone? I probably stick it in my pocket that way. I've done that for years. I guess I'm old as a tree. Got to get the job done. God told me to curse this cancer by the roots. In your breast and going around into your back. What have the doctors said? Well, they, uh, I went to meet with the uh, palliative care and hospice team, and my doctor said there's nothing much you can do. There's nothing the doctors can do. I love it because after God does it, the doctors can't get credit for it. Amen. And here's what the Lord told me to do in the vision. First told me to anoint you with this oil. And I you remember when Jesus cursed the fig tree? Yes. Jesus was hungry. He wanted some figs. There wasn't no figs there. And he cursed that fig tree to die. And they left and twenty four hours later the next day they said, The disciples, Lord, the fig tree that you cursed is dead. He cursed the roots of it. And here is a prayer that Jesus taught me how to pray. He said, when you pray for cancer patients, you curse the roots of cancer. Oh, curse the roots of it. And if you curse the roots of it, it's got to die. Somebody say die. It can't live in her body after today. So when the Lord heals you, it will have to be the Lord because of doctors. Did you know when people take chemotherapy and uh, radiation and all those treatments, it, it, it kills your immune system? Not only does it supposedly take care of the cancer, it, you, you'll never have a 100% immune system again makes you susceptible to other diseases and germs to come into your body. You can't fight it all. Well, I, I refuse. I couldn't make them do it. They wanted to do it. Came on radiation. I think that's a wise choice. You made a good decision. Here's what the Lord told me. 
want you, Martha, Rabosanda, in the name of Jesus. Peggy Martin, come over here quickly. Peggy Martin, I'm paging you. I want you to lay hand on her breast. Had a, had a person, listen, when you criticize the anointing of God, had a person to criticize one of my evangelists laying hands on people that came through the prayer line, said he was up there laying his hands on the women's breast. I said, was you the only person that saw this, or did the other 200 people see it too? And that man's dead today. He's younger than me. Dead in his grave. You better keep your mouth off of the anointing of God. Now, Lord Peggy and I come into agreement for Martha. We curse this cancer. I command this cancer to die in the name of Jesus. I lay my hand on top of my wife's hand. Honey, take your other hand, put it on her back, right towards her shoulder. Right, in, right down, just right there. Right there. What did you do? I curse this thing in the name of Jesus. Come on, Elder, yes. This this man walking up here, Elder Merle Crudup, five and a half years ago, they gave him 24 hours to live. And I said they gave him 24 hours to live five, over five years ago. We anointed him with oil. Doctor said, call the family members in. He's going to die. But he's alive today. He beat cancer. Margaret Fine, Teresa, stand up here. This is family members. I want everybody that's related to Merle Crew to come up and stand because he called. He said, call the family members in. Family members of Merle Crew to come up here right now. Look at here. All of them came. They thought he was going to die. They came in that hospital. 30-something people in there, I guess, at one time. They said Merle was going to die. They said he was going to die. But we anointed him with oil. Curse that cancer. The doctor said 24 hours he's going to die. Five years ago, but he's still alive today. Jesus is the cancer killer. God said, I'll reverse the curse. Oh, Baraboshata, in the name of Jesus, curse this cancer. Jesus' name. Lambo. I curse it. I command it to leave. It's done. Somebody say it's done. Now, here is to complete what the Lord showed me. Lord told me to take this prayer show, which is he, the scriptures, the word of God. In every situation, give me the word of God. Give me what God says. What did God say about it? The Lord says, with his stripes you're healed. Well, Brother Martin, don't you know you have to die? Yes, but you don't have to die with something. You can die, you can die in good health. God can just take you. And as you travel back home, Wrap this around your body as you're sitting in the car. Now listen, I'm a prophet of God. When you get home, each night when you go to bed, put this over your bedspread or your blanket and lay that over you and sleep 
with that word during the night. Now listen, this is a clincher. Within seven days, this thing will be completely dried up and gone, saith the Lord. Yes. Why? Because the Lord loves Martha. Why would he reverse the curse? Because he loves you. Because he loves Martha. Because he loves Margaret. Because he loves Teresa. Because he loves Mickey. Because he loves Jim. Because he loves Rhonda. Because he loves Tim. Yes, because he loves you. That's the reason he reverses the curse. Now, do you believe what I say? I believe, yes, I do. You got, you got such a sweet spirit. Can I kiss your wife? I'm just going to kiss her on the brow. Is that okay? Is that all right with you, Sister Martin? I'm going to give me some brown sugar. Mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, how did you hear about their ministry? Television? Yes, we watch it. Often, probably four, five days a week. Glory to God. I guess that's worth $30,000 a month in TV bill. That was one of the things I was going through when God says the eagle anointing is going to come up on me. Amen. The weight of carrying that every month, whether people like me or whether they don't like me. And on the seventh day, See that lady over there in that uh, autumn beige gray, uh, colored dress? You might have talked to her about it once. That's true. Say yes. Go over and hug her neck. Amen. And on the seventh day, I want you to call the office and let us give us the, the report. Amen. I will do that. Hallelujah. They're having a love feast. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Are we having church yet? Now. We're so honored that you came today. We're honored to be here. We're honored to be here. I wanted to say they did take me through some kind of infusion with chemo for like over a year but just a last resort they wanted to do radiation and chemo I said no no I won't be a guinea pig I, I'm not letting this happen you know so I just praise the Lord for blessing us to be here hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus victory temple is known for praying for the hard cases in fact about it we specialize in the hard cases. To God be the praise and the glory. Man, if I can get a good drink of water, I could probably go another hour and a half or two hours. Don't get nervous. This sounds crazy. And I don't know if you'd want to drink after me or not. But the Lord just spoke to me. If you drink the remaining portion of this water, he's going to cleanse your bloodstream. He's going to cleanse your blood. And he's going to wash out everything that's not like him. It's a simple act of faith. There's no healing in this water. There wasn't no healing in Jordan, but the prophet said, you go dip in the Jordan. There's no healing in the pool of Siloam, but Jesus said, you wash in the pool of Siloam. It's just crazy stuff. And I know you're wearing glasses, but God says the pressure behind your eyes. He's going to touch that pressure behind your eyes. Well, how's God going to touch his eyes? He drinks that water, it goes down to the belly. Same way as you drink wine, it'll heal your brain. Same way. But 
up first. I got it. Thank you, Lord. I'm gonna pour just a little of this on your head. David said, "I anointed my head with oil." God anoint your head with holy water. This is holy water. Hallelujah. Sugar diabetes. Sugar diabetes. Come up. I'm going to pray for Brother Tim. Y'all that got sugar diabetes, come up right now in Jesus' name. Would you drink that? Just take your time and drink that, brother. Come on. Just stand over here if you would, please. Everybody's got sugar diabetes. Do not come up here when I get on a roll. You want me to pray for you. You're coming now. Last Sunday, I stood for three hours in this church and preached. And when I got through preaching, I didn't want you to meet me by the side of the door and tell me about your grandma's big toe that you wanted to pray about. Because I've ministered for three hours. When I'm through, I'm through. Amen? Amen. And by the way, today when we get through, I need Tim and some of the men to put my panels up for TV. My, my props, Peggy and I, will be in TV production all this week. The first of this year, two blind people, on January the 1st, 2018, two blind people received their sight. We're going to edit those tapes and put them on television within the next two or three weeks. Fresh miracles. <laughs> Hallelujah. you and any and every member of your family that has diabetes God reverse the curse of diabetes it will not be transferred or handed down to the future siblings in this family I curse it in the name of Jesus give me a right now miracle Lord in Jesus name I curse the sugar diabetes the family curse I command it to leave and never return again. In Jesus' name, amen. Want to get me Nahum 1 and verse 9, I believe it is, and come up here when you get it. Nahum, the book of Nahum 1 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I anoint my new friend. Lord, I anoint him with this oil. He's a man of God. My spirit bears witness with him, Lord. I curse the diabetes in his body. And the Lord shows me that you have a polyp in your bowel tract about the size of a dime. And that's the reason when you go to the bathroom, you, you have blood in your stool. Am I right about that? And God says that polyp about the size size of my end of my finger or a dime that's causing the bleeding but God says within three days that's all going to be cleared up and you'll be healed and you'll not have that problem again saith the Lord oh, Jesus somebody somebody praise Jehovah I pray for you for diabetes. You know when you got diabetes, the Lord spoke to me. God shows me. August 26, 1981. Did your daddy have diabetes? I think he passed it down to you. Does that date mean anything to you? Your wife, does she have diabetes? Hallelujah. That's her birthday? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Isn't God good? Well, God says, as a confirmation to what he said through the prophet of God to confirm her.
her birth date, God has confirmed that you're healed of diabetes. Do you, do you have biological children? Are they here today? How many of them? Two. two. Come up here, two children. Because we're going to curse it in them as well. Because when they have children, they'll not pass it down. Amen. You don't go home if you want to. Stand one on each side of your dad. You're the prettiest one. How old are you? Twelve, 12 years old. I'm going to claim you as a gospel singer. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, Mom, come on down here. All of you come down here. Let's get the whole family. Amen. God, make a gospel singer out of her in the name of Jesus. Lord, do you make good grades in school? Don't be up now. No. No, I appreciate your honesty. Here's what I'm going to do. God, touch her mind that she'll retain knowledge. Touch her little mind. Give her wisdom and retain knowledge in Jesus' name. Glory to God. You, you all don't understand the magnitude of what's happening here today. Is this Holy Ghost, Brother Tim? This is Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Give me some more. You don't mind if I grease them all up, do you? Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. On your birth, there's a, been a tendency in your family, and this is going to tell it like it is, of depression, and even at times suicidal in your family. And that spirit has tried to minister to you. God delivered you from the spirit of epilepsy. Give me some water, please, somebody. I told you, I gave my water away. Spirit of epilepsy. It ain't gonna hurt you. It's raining. The Holy Ghost is raining. Oh, glory. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God delivered you from the spirit of epilepsy. Did you pray for her? Give me that bottle of oil. I just want you. You took this a bottle of oil, like some center of this. And she had a seizure, and you prayed for her, and renounced those spirits. And God set her free what, three or four years ago. 2014. No more, no more spell. No. See, that's a spirit. That's a spirit. God reversed the curse. Hallelujah. I bless this entire family. Different siblings have different personalities. They're, they're not the same. Well, why can't he be like her? Because they've got different personalities. I bless this family. I lift a prophetic covering over you. And God told me to curse the curse of poverty that's upon you. I curse the curse of poverty. I rebuke that curse of poverty. Make them the head and not the tail. In the name of Jesus, do it, Lord, for your glory. Amen. Glory to God. Y'all can go back to your seats knowing you receive what I say. I receive. You receive what I say. Absolutely. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. You can go back to your seat. Now, April, come here. Peggy Martin, come here. Please. God is my witness, and you haven't been here in a while. But Peggy just got through admiring herself in the mirror. And the mirror told her she could go. And then she turned around and looked at me. And I said something about pilot gas station. Pilot. And she said, did you know that Morgan works at pilot? She does. She does. And forgive me, but I wouldn't have thought about you for a nickel this morning. But I don't think I don't think it's a coincidence that my wife mentioned 
April and Morgan this morning, right before we came to church, and April sitting here this morning. My God, my God, my God, my God. Side note, uh, Teresa, I want to start taking uh, name, not necessarily names, but people that come from other states. This is the fifth Sunday, five Sundays in this year. This is the fifth consecutive Sunday we've had visitors from out of state at the Victory Temple Church. You know what? Why did y'all drive all the way from Indianapolis, Indiana? Well, we were looking for a healing. Looking for healing. We're known as the Healing Church. The Eagle Anointed is in this house. And it's there's no such thing as a coincidence with God. Peggy brought this up, and I, I have to prize words out of her half the time. So please talk to. Just joking, just joking. I'm thankful I got a, a wife that's a meek and a quiet spirit. But she looked, looked in the mirror and she turned. And I, I said something, I don't know what, something about Tyler. She said, Morgan, April's daughter, works for Tyler. And then it's, it's been several months, weeks, or I should say, not months, since you've been here. And here you are today. Well, here's, here is the, the correlation to this. God had you here today, and I have a word for you. You have struggled. I know you're a single parent, and God says you have struggled in the past, but it's not going to be as hard now as it was in the past. That God says, I'll put it politely, you're saved, you love God. God has removed the spirit of poverty off of you. He's reversing that curse. Amen. Hallelujah. And God is going to give you a paid-for home, saith the Lord. Amen. 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 You accept it? I do, yes. All right. Amen. And I'm I'm going to pray. I'll tell you what. It, Peggy said, I saw Morgan when she was about 12, 13 years. She danced in the Holy Ghost on this altar. Power of God was all over that child. She's not dancing in the spirit of the Lord, but she's not dancing for the Lord no more. If I didn't care about my folks, I wouldn't even pray for you. But it bothers me when I see my children in the Lord out there in the world. And we're going to break that. I anoint you in the name of Jesus, and I pray for Morgan. God, that you get her back in church, that she'll desire the things of God and the anointing of God. Reverse the curse in the name of Jesus. Reverse the curse. Everybody shout, reverse the curse. For Morgan and April in Jesus' name. Amen. You receive that? Yes, yes. Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Somebody say, woo! Oh, I like that. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. I love you. Glory. Oh, you're wet. You've been out in the rain? <laughs> Facebook, we'll be back next week this same time, 1045. You have requests, I'll be getting them a little bit later on and praying for your request. I was on Facebook the other day, and I made a statement about Peggy and I. I said, we could be in Europe today if we wanted to be. We could be traveling in Europe. I don't have to pastor this church. Well, I do have to because I have a mandate from God, and that's the reason I'm here. But uh, there was a woman in Europe watching us on Facebook, and she said, come to Europe. Come to Europe. And I said, how Bible will travel. Amen. Glory to God. Are you all driving back today? Or in the morning, we pray for traveling mercy. Your, your countenance has changed, Martha. Huh? One more time. Stand up here. Say what? Tell, 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 tell us what you feel. I feel that there is a change taking place. Mm, and I you feel the God. change? I do. I do. And I thank the Lord for that. We came expecting and we have received. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. See, she's obeying the prophet. Look what she's got on. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll keep this. Amen. And I'll I love you. 
and I have a doctor's appointment on the 13th. And so that, the seventh day we're in that night, when I go back to visit her, and she sees that this is as normal as it can be, just normal. She will be terribly surprised, and I will be surprised. Whose report do you believe? I believe the report of the Lord. Amen. 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 Bless you. God, God bless, bless you. you. Thank you. We'll wait for that phone call and that good report. Isn't that precious? Come here, Wanda. Now, you that I gave these words to, prophecy, personal prophecy. Don't take this wrong, but it's as though the Lord himself speaks to you because I'm his mouthpiece. Do you get Nahum 1 about the second time? Would you read? This is Nahum. This is the scripture. I got a scripture for everybody. One, one preacher was criticizing me to another preacher. Two preachers told me. He said, that Woody Martin's got Bible for everything. He didn't like it. I said, well, excuse me for preaching the word. I apologize for giving you the word. So what did it say? Nahum 1 and 7. What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. God says this of you that I minister to today. Diabetes, diabetes, cancer, this affliction cannot return the second time. It's dead in the name of Jesus. This affliction cannot turn, return the second time. My God, Harry, make me a tape of this service today. I want to hear what I preached. Amen. Anybody else need a tape of today's service? We're, we already got you, Joanne. Raise your hand. There's one. There's two. Glory to God. Go ahead. Three, four. All right. Go ahead and make five, Harry. Glory to God. Facebook, we love you. Lord, our Facebook family, we pray for them. Every person viewing today that's under a generational curse, I reverse the curse in the name of Jesus. I curse diabetes that's been in the family for years. I curse sugar diabetes to be gone and not be transferred down to the children and to the grandchildren. In the name of Jesus, give us miracles, and this affliction cannot return the second time, saith the Lord. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let the church say it. God bless you, Facebook. We'll be back next week at 1045. Let's give Facebook a God bless you. Come on, clap your hands. Leroy.